Wall and welcome to Stingray Tom's Florida and another Take 5 for Florida History. In this episode I cover my recent visit to the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association in Ocala. Over the years I have spent many days in the Ocala area. It's the seat of Marion County is easily one of the most important tourism regions in the state. Along with Silver Springs, arguably the oldest tourist attraction in Florida, as well as Rainbow Springs and the Long Gone Six Gun Territory, the county is also home to the Ocala National Forest, the Ocklawaha River, and Big Daddy Don Garlet's Drag Racing Museum. Still, Marion County's international claim to fame is the horse, more specifically the thoroughbred. While the term thoroughbred is occasionally used to describe any purebred horse, in reality it's a distinct breed. It was developed in England in the late 17th century by breeding English mares with a handful of imported Arabian, Berber, and Turkoman stallions. Descendants of those original thoroughbreds would find their way to the British American colonies as early as 1730. Fast forward to the 1940s and the Ocala area would start to become a center for thoroughbred breeding and training. Events progressed quickly and by the 1950s there were over 100 horse farms in the region. Now before I get into this interesting story, it's quiz time. I've got three questions for you, each of which will be answered in the video. I'll even go over them at the end. Question 1. Which state has the highest density of horses per square mile? Question 2. Which U.S. county has the most horses and ponies? Question 3. Where is the world's leading marketplace for two-year-old thoroughbred horses? As you probably know, Stingray Tom's Florida is about tourism history in the Sunshine State. So what do horses have to do with that? Well, thoroughbred horse racing has been a significant tourist draw for nearly 100 years. With the development of tracks such as Hylia Park in 1925 and Gulfstream Park in 1939, Southeast Florida emerged as an important part of the American horse racing scene. In the early 20th century, Florida added horse racing, dog racing, and the unique sport of highlight to its list of attractions. These are the trifecta of paramutual gaming, if you will. Millions of locals and vacationers would flock to horse races and provide the tracks and the state with significant revenue streams. Then the thoroughbred farms in Marion County themselves would become tourist attractions throughout the 50s and 60s. The local government, along with the horse farms, would create brochures that listed the farms which were open to the visitors. As you can see in this brochure, an additional horse farm brochure was even promoted along with one on fishing. Since the 50s, the area has regularly promoted its association with the many horse facilities. This includes the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association, founded and located in Ocala. The FTBOA describes itself as a not-for-profit organization with the mission of promoting the Florida thoroughbred worldwide. It represents more than 1,400 thoroughbred breeders and owners internationally who breed, raise, sell, train, and race thoroughbreds born in the state of Florida. In a bit, I'm going to have Tammy Gant, Associate Vice President of the FTBOA, tell you much more about the association, its work, and museum. Yes, that's the third aspect of thoroughbred horses that's directly associated with tourism. The FTBOA's office is open to the public and contains a small but fascinating museum and research library. 
It's located across from the Ocala International Airport and near the Ocala Breeders Sales Company, a place I visit on a regular basis. Known as OBS, it's the largest auction house for thoroughbred horses. In fact, I discussed OBS in this video from last year, a video that also discusses the origins of Ocala's thoroughbred industry. While you don't have to watch it before seeing this video, I would encourage you to view it at some point. It covers other aspects of the story that I'm talking about here. I have three clips from my conversation with Tammy Gant. In this first clip, Tammy discusses the mission of the FTBOA and the thoroughbred industry. Well, I think you asked me what the mission of the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association is. Yes. So, so what that is, in 1945, we were founded, and it was to promote the mission of the Florida Thoroughbred. It's really that simple. So, so the Florida Thoroughbred is primarily bred as a racehorse, and we're the second leading breeding region in the United States, give or take. Some years we're third, some years we're fourth, but we're always in that top two tier. And, and we breed more thoroughbreds than any other country, and we breed more than any other, except for Kentucky, obviously, the worldwide leader. And so it's pretty exciting that our mission is to promote the Florida thoroughbred. We do that here locally in Ocala, Florida, which is the breeding region, and also the training region. And we also do this um, in the sales region, I, I left out, but we also do this um, nationally and internationally with um, trade missions to emerging markets where we find that people are, are interested in purchasing Florida thoroughbreds. Cool. You want me to tell you a little bit about Horse Capital of the World? Yeah, sure. So Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association realized uh, many decades ago that we actually are the horse capital of the world, and that's based on the number of horses and ponies. Um, in this county, we have more horses and ponies than any other county in the United States, and that's been um, proven through a couple of, of um, surveys done nationally through the American Horse Council, and recently again in 2019, that was the same case. And so what's interesting about that, we, we have a trademark, Horse Capital of the World, the standalone, and then we also have Ocala Marion County Horse Capital of the World, which is our other. And so we use both of those freely to promote the goods and services here um, in our area that, that um, create the robust horse environment that we have. And so we have 80,000 horses and ponies, and the question we get is, well, well, who's second? Who must be the second leading county? And people are a little bit surprised at first until they hear it, but that's Lancaster, Pennsylvania, because of the Amish horses. And so, and then folks go, what about Kentucky? And we're like, Fayette's in that top five in, in Fayette County, Kentucky. We are the leading uh, th um, horse state by states in the United States. Um, we're number one by square miles. So Florida has about 400,000 horses in Florida. People don't realize that. California and Texas have many more horses, but California is two times the size, two and a half, two times the size, and, and Texas is, I think, four times our size. So when you go by square mile, we have the most horses and ponies, which is very exciting. So many people say, well, how did all the horses and ponies get here, or why would you be here? And and that has a little bit to do with Needles, who won the Flor or the Florida bred, the first Florida bred, won the Kentucky Derby in 1956. And so after Needles won the Derby, many people came to see him. It was really neat to come meet a live Kentucky Derby winner. So in the 50s, many people made their trip down here to Central Florida, and then they realized, wow, wait a second, there is something here. There's this beautiful, actually hilly countryside that exists in Florida, one of the few places that you can find that. And a beautiful countryside, we have the, the Ocala National Forest, and then the, the, the springs, Silver Springs, and a number of, number of high magnitude springs. So then people began to look closely at the actual farm, farmland, and they realized, wait a second, there's a limestone ridge that runs from here all the way to Tallahassee. And so that limestone ridge, um, you know, that's, that, that limestone seeks into the soil and creates these really, really wonderful um, rich soils and grasses that are, so it feeds those grasses, which then creates strong bones for thoroughbreds and for the horses that graze there, especially in our northwest part of our county. Then in addition to the spring flood aquifers, which much of that water is, is uh, pulled through wells in our county, so horses are drinking that mineral rich water. And so that combination is, is one of the four places in the world that you can see. Uh, Chantilly, France, a place in Australia, and then also the bluegrass of Kentucky. And there may be others that haven't um, been identified as, as quite as, as big as they have, but these are the ones. And so what we do is we work um, you know, the horse farms work really hard to protect those spaces if they can, as far as that really unique soil and, and water pattern that's really good for breeding uh, and raising strong thoroughbreds. 
And then also we have the wonderful climate here, as you know. And so the, the climate really helps us because horses can, can train here. First of all, they're bred and, and they foal on ground that's not frozen, which is very nice for, for the horses. And in addition, then they can train year round without the fear of being on frozen ground or hardened, hardened soil. And so about 15,000 thoroughbreds a year train here, and a lot of people don't realize that. Many of those horses go on to the spring classics, to the Derby, the Preakness, the Belmont, and then the summer classics at Saratoga. And what's neat about that is, is those horses um, have then come and touched Florida. And so we have a, a majority of thoroughbreds that are racing in the United States today that we can say pass through here. So sometimes we say it's the road the, to the Kentucky Derby, and we mean our Florida breds that go to that race. But when that starting gate opens, we see you know, three-fourths to 80% of that field has a connection to Florida. They were either sold in a sale here, they were born here, or they came here and trained for their what we call their early schooling, which is really cool. In the next clip, Tammy explains Ocala's horse tourism elements, as well as some of the fascinating and unique items in the FTBOA's museum. Yeah, so, so folks that want to take a daycation in Central Florida, Ocala, Florida is just is brilliant for it. It's a great place to visit because you do have the rolling hills and just the beautiful landscape near the forest and the springs. But you also have just a robust equine community. And so you can go over to World Equestrian Center and almost every day see a horse show. You can go to the Florida Horse Park and almost every day see um, a polo match or a horse show or trail riding. and, and and so we have the most diverse, rich um, breeds of horses here in, in the United States, in addition to the most diverse um, opportunity for disciplines and emergent disciplines. For example, we have Western dressage, which is the combination of two previous disciplines. And so there's just such a wide variety of horse sports here and horses, anybody that even just likes horses a little bit or is in love with horses, this is really the place to come in Florida because in not just that, just the Southeast, anybody coming through Florida, they wanna pass through Ocala, at least even for a day. There are farm tours available. There's additionally just beautiful scenic drives where people can enjoy seeing the horses in their natural state out at pastures. We have Millionaire's Row where you can see the multi-million dollar horse farms, but also we have a majority of horse farms that are mom and pop where people find it's very affordable to own a horse in Central Florida and they, and they do so here. And then also one of the fun tourist things is actually to visit the tack shops and the feed stores because you'll see the largest variety of saddles and bridles and anything a horse could possibly wear and, and treats for horses. There's actually a company here that makes um, horse treats. It's, oh, it's cool. actual business here. It's called Sneaky Snack. <laughs> and so um, it's amazing. We've got two feed mills here that, that are operational in addition to all the other grains you can find across the United States. And so for a tourist or a person interested in horses, it's a pretty fascinating experience. And then that leads you here to the Florida Thoroughbred Breeders and Owners Association. And what's neat about um, our association, because we do promote the mission of the Florida Thoroughbred, is we are one of the few places you can visit a free museum. And so we have a free museum that promotes um, Florida thoroughbreds, and it includes um, a Kentucky Derby trophy, the closest you can get to one without winning one. I always like to say that because I like to get very close to that trophy with hopes of one day being lucky enough to win a derby. We also have a speeding ticket from the fastest horse in the world, Dr. Fager, who set the world record for the mile in 1968. And that, that speeding ticket is here in our museum, and you can see that. We also have five horses inducted into the Chamber, Chamber of Commerce, and the Marion County Chamber of Commerce actually happens to be the, the, the national number one chamber of commerce this year. So that's pretty exciting that our number one chamber has five horses through history <laughs> in its, in its uh, chamber of commerce. In addition, we have a library, we have a museum, we have an extensive art collection of original artwork. And our library has some books that you won't find anywhere else at any, any library in the world, not even the Keeneland Library or the National Museum of Racing. So we really kind of complement um, all of those things and a lot of folks will come and just look through and and read about history They'll also see our, our USS Kentucky replica bell that tells the history of the, the Florida breads here that that bell was rung every time a Florida bread would beat a Kentucky bread on our Shady Lane Road and you can actually travel Shady Lane Road see Ocala Stud which is actually the the oldest active thoroughbred farm in the state still today they have the oldest wooden barn in the state that's still functional in, in use it houses about 100 um, colts every year and, and fillies. They also have one of the first um, original swimming pools built for horses in the United States for a stallion named Rough and Tumble who 
who had some lameness issues, so they used the swimming pool for him um, to give him therapy. That exists um, over there. So it's just a really exciting place to visit, and I think our museum adds a lot of that history to what you, it's, it's almost like the, the old feeling of Florida, where you go to some of those um, little stops and attractions along the roadside. That's what it feels here, even though it's in a modern facility and it's a modern industry. And then also we're only about a quarter mile away, not even a quarter mile, maybe an eighth of a mile away from Ocala Breeder Sales. And they have horse sales five to six times a year. And it's the world's, and when I say world's, the world's leading marketplace for two-year-old horses and training. So if you wanna buy a race-ready thoroughbred, you can come buy a race-ready thoroughbred at any price point here. They control 70% of the marketplace for, for two-year-olds in the world. And people come from 41 countries, every state except Alaska, and, and the U.S. territories to purchase horses here. So it's a really good place to, to make a stop. And then if you love art, like I said, we have our art collection, but we also have our Horse Fever horses. We're in the third generation of those. 20 years ago, we launched Horse Fever. You'll see horse statues in front of many, many of the hospitals and businesses and banks and, and community foundations throughout our county and in our downtown, in our city um, areas, in fact, in front of our firehouse. And these horses represent the, the impact horses have here in the county, which is $2.62 billion, billion with a B, and 21,000 jobs that are attributed to equines. And so we have in front of ours, if you come to visit our museum, we have Champ. And Champ actually is very colorful, and people go, why is he not a horse color? And it's, he has 13 silks, which are what we call the legacy or iconic silks of of our horse industry and on the plaque it lists what those famed farms are and many of those farms are here historically or they've changed their names over time and become possibly split up in smaller farms but a majority of those still um, can be seen or visited or you know you can drive by and take some beautiful photographs of the horses out in the field. So that's a little bit of a lot actually of re reasons to come here to Central Florida. There is little doubt that anyone who loves horses will really enjoy this museum. It's small, but since the collection is comprised of small objects, there's actually quite a lot to see. I think that the original paintings of Florida's most famous and successful horses is a highlight of the museum. I'm only showing a few here, but there are several dozen paintings gracing the building, even along the hallways leading to the staff offices. Most of the horses pictured have Wikipedia pages of their own, so it's easy to learn a bit about them while viewing the beautiful artwork. When you visit the museum, ask if someone has the time to talk about the collection. There's so many stories that you won't learn just by looking at the items. I really appreciate the history that Tammy shared with me when I visited, along with the hospitality all the staff offered. In the previous horse video I made, I shared the history of Tartan Farms and its horse cemetery, and the museum has many items directly connected with that facility, its staff, and remarkable horses. In this final clip, Tammy describes the friendly rivalry that has existed for nearly 80 years between the thoroughbred areas in Kentucky and Florida. Um, I think you touched on something really good, which is many people, when you say we're horse capital of the world, they go, what about Kentucky? And we love Kentucky. We believe that, that anywhere there's, there's horses in the masses, that's, that's a wonderful thing. And for those of us that love horses, that's really important. But um, so we believe that Kentucky also is a great place to visit and they're the worldwide leader for thoroughbreds. But as far as the, the, the actual on the ground number of horses and actually our trademark, um, horse capital of the world in our hearts believe, it belongs here in Central Florida in Ocala. Um, but we love the thoroughbred capital of the world um, in Kentucky because without that, um, I don't think that we would, would see such an amazing industry worldwide without all those thoroughbreds. And we're glad to be a part of that with the thoroughbreds that we breed, own, race, train here also. So let's go back and take a look at those three questions. Which state has the highest density of horses per square mile? As you should know now, it's Florida. 
As Tammy explained, while both California and Texas have more horses overall, the Sunshine State has the highest density. And no, that doesn't mean our horses are thicker. Which U.S. county has the most horses and ponies? Yet another obvious leading question, I suppose, but of course it's Marion County. And yet the county is only the fifth largest in area in the state. By the way, those 80,000 horses means that there's one horse for every four human county residents. Where is the world's leading marketplace for two-year-old thoroughbred horses? That's the OBS. Its auctions held each year not only sell most of the Florida-bred two-year-olds, but a large percentage of those that were born in Kentucky and elsewhere. If you're a follower of my channel, you'll know that I'm not only interested in tourism history, but animals as well. That's why I have a playlist dedicated to them. I think it's particularly fascinating when the two subjects intersect, such as they do with thoroughbred horses. I'm sure I'll revisit this subject again someday. I do hope to get around to visiting a couple of the horse farms that are currently open to the public. I've been on horse farms before, but I haven't taken one of the organized tours that are now being offered. If you'd be interested in such a tour, I'll put a link in the description, along with a link to both the FTBOA and the OBS. Hopefully by now you know what both of those mean. So that's it for this video. Once again, I want to thank the FTBOA for providing all the fascinating information. Thank you once again for watching another of my videos. Please like it and subscribe to the channel to learn more about Florida's tourism history. Stingray Tom's Florida, traveling through time around the Sunshine State.